The Spiral Abyss is Genshin's most challenging content available, where players go to push the limits of themselves and their characters. But every 45 days, the Abyss changes. With new monsters, new blessings, it is completely revamped. Which means potentially the Abyss could be easier for you and your account, but Hoyaverse has just been making the Abyss harder and harder and harder. Difficulty change or not, it was time for me to challenge myself. No five stars allowed. Zhongli, Yelan, Raiden, they're all on the bench. And that's no five star weapons either. To prove that you don't need deep pockets or to be insanely lucky to be able to clear the abyss. Oh, and cause it's really fun. And of course, 36 stars only. I don't accept anything lower for myself, okay? So what does this floor 12 cycle actually look like? Chamber One's first half has a pack of small rift towns, which eventually call their big brothers to come fight you for them instead. And a pyro lector. The pyro lector is one of the easiest lectors in my opinion. We just need to make sure to bring hydro or lots of cryo. The rift towns movement can be an absolute pain to get them to group up as well as they apply corrosion to your team. It's a damage over time bleed effect that goes through shields. So healing is a must. And side two is very annoying. Three ancient Doritos into two Bethysmal Bishops. Into two rogue Hillatrills and a Thunderhelm Lava Troll. This has been Genshin's idea lately of creating a difficulty spike in the Abyss. Multiple waves of enemies to artificially create a more difficult Abyss. Because of the time constraint for 36 stars, it's more difficult when you have to kill an entire wave before the next one spawns. So it looks like this is gonna be the hardest chamber of the cycle yet again. Which sucks because this is yet another cheeky difficulty spike Hoyaverse has been sneaking in. When they make the first chamber of the abyss the hardest, it's secretly even harder because you only have one abyss card bonus instead of potentially two or three. All right, Hoyaverse, I see you. Well played. Chamber two starts with two Aramite dancing water girls and two pyro slinger for twoies into four shadowy husk night guys. There's no elemental restrictions here, which is nice since the pyro for twoies shield isn't really a shield. It just raises his resistances a ton, but we're bringing hydro anyway. And the husk don't like it when you shield. Fine, man. I won't. Second half is Simon. We've seen him a hundred times now. Dendro and Electro combine really just make him fold. It is a DPS check. Finally, Chamber 3. Two Aramite Warriors, the big bulky Electro guy, and another Hydro Girl. At first, they seem pretty easy, but after this cute Hydro Girl walks out of your life, you are going to be thinking about her for weeks on end because that's how long the slowing water that she applies lasts, which makes your cooldowns 50 times longer. After you beat them, an Aramite Lore Master and Mirror Maiden spawn, a simple pair of thick HP ladies, just how I like it. For the Abyss's finale, we have the Rhyme Biter and Bolt Eater Bethysmal Vishaps, the ones from Enconomia. Except there is no pillar mechanic at all. Usually they jump onto a wall or a pillar and you can knock them down for a big window of damage. While this seems like a detriment, it's actually nice not needing a Claymore or Geo character to break the constructs faster. So that is what we are up against. It is time to build the teams. Homies, this is looking like National Aggravate. I think this is about to be the just most bog standard, boring national team, but I mean, this shit gets done. Big pyro damage. Sucrose gonna help group stuff. Shing Cho's gonna help break the shields. As Streamix just explained, National is king and will put in work on side one. This abyss is luckily so much more flexible in what elements you need to bring. So I knew I could safely bring some of my best teams without running into too many road bumps. Side two, I have a lot of different options and was trying to figure out which was best. I do wanna kinda just try Sayu for the culture though. By the way, Streamix is really cool. You guys should go hang out with them over on twitch.tv slash xtv. Shangling National is one of the best teams in the game for a reason. Shangling vapes every single time with Pyronado. Xing Cho does big damage, damage reduction, stagger resistance, off field hydro application, the list goes on. Bennett, the Pyro Archon, is an invaluable asset on any team. Massive heals, attack buffs, and he generates a lot of energy, especially for Shangling. And our favorite bone collector, Sucrose. Animo with the Viridus and Venera artifact set is just a staple in Genshin team building. As well as she can group enemies and generate energy with up to three uses of her skill with Sacrificial Fragments. Side two has Fischl, the princessin herself, leading the charge. Take my word for it, Fischl is 
cracked. She does so much damage, so much electroplication, and generates so much energy. Real ones know that she legit rivals Raiden Shogun herself. I am not kidding. Kale, our favorite forest scout, makes a return. She's not fancy, but she applies a lot of dendro when we need it, where we need it. I'm looking at you, Uruguay. Plus, when you build her right, she does a solid amount of damage. Beto is the queen of destroying multiple targets with big electro damage. So in this cycle, she really shines versus the waves. And Sayu, look, sometimes I just want to throw Sayu into the mix to appease one of my Twitch mods who loves Sayu. But she really does hold her own here. Animo and Viridus and Venerer, need I say more, heals, and versus single targets, she is my best form of DPS with her role. With all the pieces in place, we set out to complete yet another Tough Abyss Challenge. Here we go! Oh my god, there's a freaking Pyro Lector here? Okay, should have him. Nice. Okay. That was about half the time. No! Okay. I had that. I, I, I had that. Oh my god, they're getting wrecked, bro. Oh, this is so good. That wolf is so stupid. Why are you here, bro? If you're just gonna sit over there. That's cringe. Ah! Oh my god, this is fast, homies. I gotta make sure not to troll this. Eight forty two. Please, Groo. Yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Fifteen seconds to spare. Next chamber. Oh, my God. My whole team's at low HP. That's all right. Oh, my God. These guys are getting fucking melted. How easy is this floor? I feel like I went a little too hard. Well, let's see the next side. That was fast. Am I trolling? Okay, this is good because they're both gonna get fucking rolled here. Oh my god, that took way too long to kill him at the end. But that was good. Okay, I got official. That's all right. I should be okay. Full energy on top side and a ton of energy on the bottom and some more horrible abyss cards, baby. I'm gonna just take the device. Stop leaving. Where are you? I don't even know where you are. Okay. Whew. Ooh, okay, they got roasted right there. Okay, okay, group, group. Sorry, work. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh my God. No. No. Yes! We did it, homies. Four star characters only. Four star weapons only. We call that a dub. Guys, I have to admit, the other abyss was, you yeah, know, way harder. But I don't give up. I don't give up. I cleared that shit. It's like my, you're right. That was too easy. So let's step it up a notch. I've always kind of joked around to myself about the four star girls only clear, but the more I kept thinking about it, the more I thought it might actually be possible right now. So I said, screw it. That's the challenge. Four star girls only, four star weapons, 36 stars. Now you may have noticed the teams I just used had six out of eight girls already. So this will be easy eeks. It's just two characters. Just two characters? You think Bennett and Xing Cho are just two characters? They're pretty much six stars, not even four stars. The amount of support, damage, healing, everything they provide being wrapped up into one single character each is absurd. Taking them out is truly a huge hit to the top team. I'll tell you now, I'm looking to replace them with Rosaria and Barbara. Melt versus Vape with Rosaria and Xing Cho feels about the same damage wise, so I'm not stressing over that. But beyond the slight heals Xing Cho provides and the stagger resistance, Xing Cho helped us avoid one of Genshin's oldest pitfalls circle impact circle impact is the community joke term of abilities that only have their effects happen in a stationary circle on the ground 
while these characters and abilities are obviously really good you just have to play better and smarter to keep enemies within your circle or they don't do anything with Xing Chou and Shang Ling, however, they can run around vaping wherever they want, whenever they want, like a rich white kid from Silicon Valley. And so obviously, Barbara is no replacement for Bennett, that's for sure. But she does apply valuable hydro to enemies, boosting up Shang Ling's damage, as well as providing hydro normal attacks to safely get through pyro lectors and pyro gunslingers. She's also gonna be healing up the team and hopefully doing a bit of damage with the Ocean Hued Clam artifact set. So don't sleep on Barbara. I know she's a free healer that you get, and it may just seem like that's all she does is heal, but she is a hydro catalyst, which is extremely valuable, and she is way more versatile in combat than you probably think she is. While Sucro stayed virtually the same, I needed to tweak Shangling's build for this team comp, unfortunately. With no Favonius Sword Bennett anymore, that is a lot of energy Shangling is missing out on. Energy is Shangling's biggest and pretty much only weakness. With an 80 cost burst and very low energy generation herself, Pyro Particles from other teammates are priceless. So with that said, I had to swap her onto this very mediocre energy recharge sands I have to keep her on four piece emblem and give her the ER she now needs. Crit and Elemental Mastery are very cool guys, I know. But if you don't have enough energy to use your insanely strong burst, it is useless. So with Shangling's damage just a little bit nerfed, Rosaria and Ocean Hued Thrilling Tales Barbara are going to need to put in work. Now, no MLA formatted SA for side two, but we did need to make some revisions. I changed Fischl from two piece attack, two piece attack, to two piece electro damage, two piece attack. I thought it would be more beneficial to my overall damage output. I also optimized Beto's stats to get about 20 more crit damage out of her at the cost of some of her ER because I noticed she wasn't having any energy issues whatsoever. That's Fischl and Fab for you. Speaking of Fab, Sayu stayed exactly the same. She was doing her job great, so she stayed unchanged. But I did make one change to Kale, and while it may seem super minor, I think it made a massive difference for the team's performance. I changed Kale from Favonius Bow to Sacrificial Bow. Fab is obviously the GOAT, but it excels at giving energy to the team, and this team didn't need energy funneled to them as much. Fischl and Sayu were having no issues, and Beto loves energy funnel to her, but Sayu and Fischl had that covered. So the one that was actually having some very slight energy issues was Kale herself. Being able to cast your skill twice, generating dendro particles for yourself twice is more valuable to Kale than Fav. And the other big bonus of Sacrificial Bow was its base attack. Favonius Bow at level 90 has 454 attack, while Sacro has a whopping 500 and 65. Kale was on this team to do damage, not just apply dendro. So this was a massive buff, especially with side one being overall a little weaker now without Bennett and Xing Cho, we needed team two to carry more weight than ever before. So after all the theory crafting changes and tweaks, this was our star studded cast of Queens ready to go out and slay the abyss. Four star girls only holding four star weapons, 36 stars. Let's see if it's possible. We've got to step it up. I wanted to make it even harder because that's just the kind of guy I am. I love torturing myself live on twitch.tv. Dude, this was not a bad clear, like at all. Oh my God. Four star chicks only, bro. Are we going to do this? Don't get too hyped. Legit, I've had good runs and then just dog shit runs for three hours. <laughs> My beginning rotations were a little bit clunky because I was trying to swirl Pyro on all the Rift Towns before I Pyro NATO. I decided if I just Pyro NATO first, I may miss out on its initial hit being stronger, but it would make the swirl easier to land, increasing my damage over time. I run behind the Rift Town here to position Sucrose so that her skill will hit almost every single Rift Town. During this fight, I've been slowly moving up the room while fighting in an attempt to have my second Rosaria and Shangling Burst on top of where the big hounds and lectors spawn, and this time, it worked out perfectly. Every second count. That was good. If you are still sleeping on Barbara and Rosaria, watch how fast they drop this Pyro Lecter's bomb. It's beautiful. The last 10 seconds or so were a little sloppy, but they cleared in a solid one minute and 28 seconds. That was fast, man. That was fast. By using Fischl's Burst first, I can get into position to group the Doritos faster while also summoning Oz, so it is a total win-win. Oh my god, I got them without having to drop fish uh, without dropping Oz. That's fucking huge. We cleared them so fast, we didn't need to summon Oz a second time, setting us up to kill the Vishaps even faster than usual, too. 
By running over to the wall here, you get far enough away from the Hillatrol Rogue on the other side of the room to make them walk forward instead of wasting time doing their ranged attack and not grouping. It may seem like a waste of time standing over there for a couple seconds, but it is most certainly not. Grouping them up is crucial to clear this in time. Oh my God, dude, get fucked. Oh, dude, let's go, man. They went hard. The girls went fucking hard. Now this floor I thought was going to be a cakewalk, but it really emphasized that circle impact has its weaknesses. While the Aramite girls would group themselves up wherever I go, I had to kill the Pyro Slingers one by one because of how far they spawned from one another. This was a huge time loss, especially with once again, the team's DPS just being overall a little bit lower without Xing Cho and Bennett. And on the second half, while Simon isn't exactly difficult, I was gonna barely meet the minimum amount of damage I needed. You see, Beto is an absolute monster versus multiple targets. Her burst bounces between enemies back and forth, dealing tons and tons of damage. But unfortunately, against a boss on its lonesome, like Simon, Beto Burst has nowhere to bounce. So Beto is operating at like 20% of her damage potential. I'm not kidding. It pretty much meant I had no room for error. And Fischl, Sayu, and Kale had to be the hard carries here. Let's not click the Kale Burst because she doesn't, she doesn't know better. One other thing to note about this floor that was very important was energy. I needed team one especially to have practically full energy going into chamber three. Obviously this isn't as fast as I'd like, but I'm trying to save as much energy as I can. Since the clear water Aramite applies slowing water, making your cooldowns extremely long, and by proxy, your energy regeneration really low in the chamber. So even if I was having a solid run, I would need to reset the floor if my energy was too low by the end of it. That was like an insanely fast clear, but it's cause I Shangling bursted and I don't think I can beat the third floor if I don't go in with a lot of energy. With a super fast clear on the first Pyro Slinger, I stayed on the Aramites for a little bit longer as to not waste some of Rosaria's burst ticks. After her burst wore off, I ran straight for the Gunslinger. I luckily had Shangling's burst up to deal with the husks. And after positioning well to swirl Pyro on all of them, just look how much damage Rosaria can pump out on all four of them with a well-placed burst. I think my energy is actually pretty decent. When you get Viridus and Venerer successfully procced onto the boss, you can find him easier after he goes invisible with the arrows pointing down. But he always jumps directly forward, the direction he was facing prior. So if you're paying attention, you'll know just where to find him. Okay. Energy. Yes, dude. Ooh, and we controlled the energy. Oh, last chamber. With what we thought was the worst behind us, it's time to finish the run. Only chamber three remains. The knock into the bubble, nice, nice. That's cool. God, the cooldowns are so fucking long. Eight thirty-two. That's decent. That's half. That's exactly half. But this side is just brutal, man. <laughs> By just going goblin mode on the clear water Aramite, we got rid of the slowing water as fast as possible and then focused on the mirror maiden knowing the electro Aramite would come to us. With a little bit of luck, the mirror maiden moved right on top of the lore master's spawn location and was thrown right into the fire. Oh, look how well they're grouped. Yes, dude, yes. Oh my God, really fast clear. Rosaria survived on like one HP, bro. Since the Vishaps will revive one another if they aren't killed at the same time, it's all a balancing act of switching between the two as your focus. I saved Beto Burst here since I know they're gonna be jumping away soon and I need it to finish them off safe.
weapons, four-star characters, man. God damn! We are destroying this event! Ooh, 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 ooh. Don't even ask about four-star guys. Talk to Hoyver, send an email. Oh, let's go! I'm obviously super hyped for this. But like, if Fonte comes out next patch, which is gonna come out next patch, this is the abyss that all the new players and like the returning players are gonna fight. So I feel like they made it not as hard. Homies, give it up for the squad. Everybody played a role. No one was just like a tag along. Even Sayu, man. So that's how we did it. 36 stars with four star ladies only. Now, I know this abyss was not as hard as the last one, but I can promise you there will be a day probably soon where there will be another impossibly hard abyss and I will be there until that day and on that day to clear it with another ridiculous four star challenge. This run and all my future runs are gonna be streamed on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash eekstv. Guys, come check out the stream. I promise you will have a great time and I will personally thank you very much. And guys, check if you're subscribed to the channel here on YouTube, okay? It makes a big difference. The like, the comment, it really does. Thank you very much. And then big shout outs to the patrons. We've got Zick, Poison Tongue Boy, Steven, and Meow, everyone else. I appreciate you guys so much for helping make videos like this possible. And guys, with that, I'll see you guys in the next challenge, next video, maybe the next stream. <laughs> Bye guys.